Hi everyone, welcome to Biology Professor. I'm going to be using a little bit of a different format today. We are going to be talking about the metamorphosis of Xylophanes tersa uh, from caterpillar through to tersa sphinx moth. Uh, you can see my virtual background here is one of these caterpillars. Basically, uh, I found three of them um, all on the same afternoon out in my garden. And I decided to you know, trap them and put them in a terrarium and experience their metamorphosis. I took lots of pictures and videos and I'm gonna share it with you. So this will teach you about the, uh, the, the metamorphosis, the life cycle of the Xylophanes tersa, tersa sphinx moth. And also, you know, if you find one of these, uh, these hornworms right here in your garden, then you'll know what to do if you'd like to see them uh, go through that metamorphosis process as well. So I am going to share my screen and present this right here. Let's see. Oh, whoops, I just realized something. I should um, share my screen in a way that means you can hear some of the videos that I'm going to play. So I'm gonna try this again, share screen. I'm gonna share sound and there, that should be better. So, Tersa sphinx moth, metamorph metamorphosis, that's the scientific name, Xylophanes tersa, and all of the pictures and videos are by me. So basically, July 14th, uh, I am in Arkansas. Uh, I found three of these guys. Here's a picture of one, and they were just basically crawling around in a garden bed. I put them in a terrarium, and by terrarium, I mean that I took an, uh, uh, an OXO container and took the lid off. I put soil inside and also some of the weeds that I had found in the area that they had been feeding on, and then put like some cellophane over the top and poke some holes in it. So here you can see two more of these hornworms feeding on the weeds. Eventually, um, actually very quickly, by July 17th, just three days afterwards, uh, they had already formed pupae. Here's some early pupae. Here are some later pupae, a couple of days later. And then a couple of weeks after that, I had adult tersa sphinx moths that I eventually released. So let's look at what that looks like. Uh, here's one of these hornworms. Again, the caterpillars known as hornworms. Why? Because they've got this uh, horn on the end. Um, I use my iNaturalist app to identify this as a xylophanes tersa moth or caterpillar that would become a moth. Here we have my homemade terrarium. Again, it was just an OXO container. Um, I originally tried to give them hosta leaves because the first one I had found in my garden bed where I was growing hostas, but they wouldn't eat any of those. And actually I found that they were eating this other plant, this other weed instead. So I had to replace that weed in the terrarium about twice a day. They really would eat every single leaf and the, the stems would just be in here with no more leaves on them, leaves on them. So I would have to replace them. So what was I feeding them? Actually, it's buttonweed. So I would just find buttonweed out in my yard. Here's what it looks like. It does have some of these little white flowers and they would just chew, chew, chew this stuff up. So this is buttonweed, Diodia virginiana, uh, according to the iNaturalist app. I'm going to play a video here so you can see them eating in the terrarium. Okay. So this right here is the Sphinx moth caterpillar that Claire has named Bowie. We found Bowie first. Uh, he or she has been in our little homemade terrarium for a couple of hours and has been eating tons of these, these long, thin leaves. He's kind of slowed down there a little bit. And then we found two more. Um, one is Zoe and the other is Chloe. They were named Zoe and Unicorn Fairy, but Claire didn't like that. So now we've got Bowie, Chloe, Zoe. Um, and they are all this kind of moth. The, the spots are actually supposed to look like snake eyes. So it kind of makes them look like, a, like the head of a snake when they're in the dirt. Um, this one is, I guess, just 
starting to maybe want to eat. They were kind of stunned when we picked them up and dropped them in. Um, this was the most recent addition, and it's still, I think, uh, wanting to play dead, maybe. <laughs> but Bowie's been in here the longest and has just been eating, eating, eating. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to look at them a little bit more. That video was when we had just put them in the terrarium. It had been kind of moving around a lot, and they weren't really eating the way they, they were at other times. So here's another video of them in the terrarium. And so here you can actually see them eating. Um, you know, they'd been moving around. Two of them in particular were just eating, eating, eating. That last one that we dropped in, you can still kind of see it at the bottom. To be honest, it never really ate any of the button weed. It didn't seem to be interested in eating. And we'll see more about that lately. I love this view right here. You can see this guy um, almost eating like a typewriter down there, just left to right, up and down, eat, eat, eat. This one is, is not really eating. It's actually kind of, um, We'll see another view of that here in a second, but it uh, it never really was acting the way the other ones were. Now, here we have uh, some younger pupae. Each of these pictures was taken within like 24 hours of when they started to pupate. So you can still see that there's still kind of some greenish color in there underneath the brown and black. And then this is a couple of days later and they have finished pupating and have these cocoons that are actually really beautiful, I think. I love the intricacy of those cocoons. And of course, even as pupae, they were moving. So this video is going to show that like when they were disturbed, sometimes you'll see them kind of twitch. So even though they are encased in their cocoons, they're definitely still alive and able to give some, some basic responses to their environment if they were picked up or moved, for example. So there you can see it twitching. And this is just that I had, I had moved the terrarium. Um, they actually had mostly kind of buried themselves in the soil, but I had brushed away that top layer of soil. And so you can kind of see them reacting to that. And then we had uh, the adults emerge. Now this is actually the first one. The first one, which was the, the, the caterpillar that had not been eating at all in the terrarium. Um, it was the one that emerged first. You see it actually kind of on top of, this is after all three had emerged and there are some empty cocoons here and it's kind of on top of that. Here you see a nice indicator of what its wings look like. It kind of reminds me of like a stealth bomber or something. And so here we have some pictures of the, um, or a video of the Sphinx moths as adults. This is before we had released them back into the wild. I had been worried that they might need some kind of source of hydration since they weren't able to get to like dew on plants when they emerged. So I had put um, a wet paper towel and a little cup of water in there. But to be honest, they never they never paid attention to either one. They, they really just wanted to be released and this didn't seem to give them any extra hydration. But this, you can see those wings vibrating. We kind of flicked them, they would, they would fly around. Note that two of them are flying up here and one is down here kind of in the corner. Uh, what I was able to see once all three were out is that the first, moth that emerged as an adult, it was the same uh, one that had pupated first and that had never eaten anything and been acting kind of abnormal as a caterpillar. And it actually, when it emerged, it had defective wings. And so let me show you what that looks like. I had two, the two that had eaten the buttonweed voraciously, and they had this normal kind of wing. And then the first one, the, the third one that we found, the one that never ate the buttonweed, um, it was just kind of behaving strangely as a caterpillar, not really eating. 
uh, and it emerged and it had these kind of curled or abnormal wings. And we were able to see that it, it could not fly normally. So this is some other views of that one with the abnormal wings. It's, it's body and torso and legs all appeared to be normal, but it's wings, again, they were kind of crinkled. They weren't spread out and straight the way the other two healthy moths were. And so this is what I mean by abnormal behavior. In this video, you can see that it is, it, rather than eating, it kept kind of folding over on itself and moving its mouth along its own body. Honestly, it kind of looked like a, like a grooming behavior, except I'm not aware of these caterpillars engaging in any grooming behavior, but it just kept doing this. You know, it was kind of folded over um, and, and just not interested in eating at all. And then this was the one that eventually had those abnormal wings. And so I don't know if the behavior can, you know, if that's related to the abnormal wing development, but maybe, and I'd love to know more. So if you know more about these guys, and you know what that behavior was, and if it's related to the, to the wing malformation, I would love to hear it. And this is actually a, a video that we took when we released them. We released them just uh, in our front yard, and you'll be able to see two of them that can fly away, and, and that last one that could not. And so here, you know, I had originally taken off the cellophane and they just wouldn't leave. I guess they were too, too used to thinking they couldn't get out. And so I was having to tap on the bottom. There you see it fly away. I was having to tap on the bottom of the, of the OXO container to get them to fly out. Here I'm doing it to get that second one to fly out as well. Uh, and eventually it's gonna go, realize that there's no more cellophane at the top, keeping it in, and there it went. And now we've got this one that's left and just, you know, I kept trying, I kept trying, and it really, it could not fly with those curled, deformed wings. And, you know, we were, <laughs> we were trying to decide what to do with it. And, you know, I considered reaching in and trying to pull on the, on the paper towel that it was on, but I didn't want to risk damaging it further. So eventually um, we did manage to get it out. I think I'm gonna skip ahead in the video a little bit. I set it down. I was just hoping it would go out, but it couldn't really. I laid the OXO container on its side. And then finally, See, I gave it a little tap again, just trying to get it to, to leave the terrarium. We're almost there. Oh, there it went. So you see now it's kind of under that drain pipe. It, it could kind of move around on the ground. It could propel itself, but it could not fly the way the other, the other two could. And so that was our uh, sort of family project of looking at metamorphosis in Tursa Sphinx moths. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you've raised similar moths or uh, if you have any questions. And thanks for watching Biology Professor.